And good morning. It is Tuesday, January 8, 2013, and this is Wayne Goldsboro Television, WGTV Today. That's right. I'm Wayne Allen. And I'm Kim Best. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. All right, Kim, what a great day we had yesterday, and more today. We have a, Absolutely. Honestly, we have a pretty good program lined up. We do. We have quite a few. We actually have Alondo Mitchell, who is here from oh, the Family yeah. Y, yeah. to talk about a program that he is responsible for, and here's the great things that are happening, and volunteer opportunities. I tell you what, Orlando is a, is a great guy. He's been uh, with the, the drum line for he many years, has. and they, he's done an amazing job with these young mm -hmm. young people in the in the drum line and in other programs as well. That's right. He's going to talk about a mentoring program that he's got oh, going great. on at the Family Y and some opportunities where people can come and volunteer and be a part of it. And what else do we have going on? We have someone here from North Carolina Wesleyan College oh. to talk about the opportunities there. Oh. Oh, wait till you hear about this. That's yeah, right. This is, I enjoyed talking with her. She's the director of uh, North Carolina Wesleyan down the street from us here. That's, and that's right. Uh, a lot of people don't even know about North Carolina Wesleyan College. That's why we're having them on the show. We oh, want to make sure the community is informed about what all is happening here locally. We also have Sergeant Leonard, who is uh, the coordinator for Crime Stoppers, here to talk about a couple cases that have happened recently. That they need the community's help. That's right. And, uh, and what else? Is then that, uh, we have Mark Wilson here who is with Goldsboro Parks and Recreation to talk about this year's Hillbilly Hike and several other things. Every time you mention Mark's name, uh -huh. I can't help but think about a guy who used to be on TV years ago named Mark Wilson. He was a magician and he was really? fantastic. Yeah. Well, I don't know if this Mark is a magician or not. I don't believe so. Well, he, <laughs> I, no, I don't think he is. He, in fact, he, he does create a lot of uh, interesting things. Yes, along he with does. Scott Barnard in the city of Goldsboro Parks and Recreation. Park. That's right. There's a whole lot to look forward to yeah. in the upcoming hour. So stay tuned with us this morning. Oh, yeah. Are you fit or are you fabulous or are you fit and fabulous? we got a thing that starts on the 14th. And this is going to be held at uh, the Fit and Fabulous thing. It's going to be held at Wayne Center at the corner of George and Chestnut Streets beginning on the 14th and running through the end of July. So I think a 29-week commitment? 29 weeks. You won't be able to go home. You have to be there and, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, okay. It's only two hours. It's only an hour a night. Uh, each night on uh, Mondays and Wednesdays from 6 until 7 p.m., you will enjoy a 29-week class at Wayne Center. Now, they will alternate from, from Zumba, I started to say Roomba. That Zumba? Zumba <laughs> to aerobics and then back and forth like that. Registration is, is uh, up until tomorrow, January 9th. You have, uh, you have to register by then or when the first 100 participants have registered. Anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And if you want information about that, you can call the, uh, call the Fit and Fabulous information line. Talk to Diane at 731-1525. 731-1525. And Wayne, we wanted to share that the tonight is the Community Affairs Commission meeting at 7 o'clock p.m. at the City of Goldsboro. Okay. They will they hold those meetings on a monthly basis, and tonight is at 7 o'clock p.m. Community Affairs Commission. All right. Let's see what else we have going on. You know, this is a busy time of year. It certainly is. Well, the Chamber of Commerce is holding its 101, Chamber 101 New Member Orientation. And that is also tonight. No, that's today. Today at lunch, that's from 12 to 1. If you want to take your lunch break and go over and learn about the benefits of being a chamber member, you can do that over at the Chamber of Commerce, like I said, at 12 o'clock noon. You can contact the Chamber of Commerce and ask for Amber Goodson if you'd like additional details. Chamber 101. All right. Now, you know the, the uh, Wayne County uh, Commissioners meet every Tuesday, the first and third Tuesday of each month, except this month they will not. Uh, that would have been on, on the 1st of uh, January, which That's is right. New Year's Day. So they have postponed it until today. Now, the Wayne County Commissioners meet this morning with a briefing beginning at 8 a.m., and then the meeting itself begins at 9 a.m., and that's in council chambers, uh, commission chambers here in the courthouse on West Walnut Street, downtown, East Walnut Street, downtown Goldsboro. <laughs> I just moved the whole courthouse. <laughs> East Walnut Street, downtown Goldsboro, and we'd love to see you there. And the Parks and Recs have an advisory commission meeting that is happening January 8th, today as well. Let's see, that meeting is this afternoon at 515 at the Herman Park Center. If you're interested in participating, you can contact the Herman Park Center and ask for additional details on how to get involved in the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee. But they are meeting today at 515. You know, Kim, a few days ago you spoke with Orlando Mitchell of the Goldsboro Family Y. Now, there's Certainly a young man did. who is just doing a wonderful job in uh in his work with the y and with the youngsters young young population here in wayne county that's right he's got a great mentoring program so stay tuned and let's hear what alondo has to say hi 
and welcome back to Wayne Goldsboro Television. I'm Kim Best. With me today is a coordinator from the Goldsboro YMCA, Alondo Mitchell. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I believe this is the first time you've been on the show, isn't first it, Alondo? First time, yes, ma'am. Well, we are ready to hear about this fantastic program at the okay. YMCA, the mentoring program. Yes, ma'am. So give me an, you know, a brief description. What is this program? Well, my job is to recruit volunteers from around the community to work with youth that we assign them to two hours a week or three times per, um, per month, uh, whatever that can give us, uh, doing something positive with our youth in different social domains. So in a nutshell, it, that's basically people in the community working with youth, mm -hmm. taking them different places mm -hmm. all over our community, right. showing them positive reinforcement mm -hmm. and just exposing them to right. a lot of different positive social domains, as right. you said, mm -hmm. all around the community. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this program has been going on for a while now, right. and you are the you are the director that or the coordinator that goes out in the community and mm -hmm. pulls in volunteers yes, to work with mm -hmm. these individuals. What have been the challenges so far so with this far, particular program? Male mentors. I just need more male mentors to step up to the plate because uh, we have about twenty to twenty-five males there on our waiting list, um, oh. just waiting to be matched uh, with the male mentor. Now, the women are stepping up to the plate, but I don't uh -oh, have... Oh, <laughs> There you go. What do we need? <laughs> but I don't have as many women, uh, as many girls on the waiting list as I do the boys. And so I'm, I'm up here today Asking saying, can we get some help? help? Yeah, uh, to help our males uh, make better decisions in life, uh, feel better about themselves, and uh, just have the confidence to know that someone is there, someone cares, someone is rooting for them. Uh, uh, to be the best that I can be. Absolutely. You know, and with all the changes and the things that are taking place yeah. in the world today, we need it's to important. provide a good foundation for our youth. That's right. Both men and women. Yeah. We, we need to step up to the plate. We need to help provide this foundation. Right. Well, so you've told me the challenges. <coughs> so you need more male mentors, first and foremost. Right. What, what have been the things that have surprised you through this program? The, the things that have just made you your heart flutter a little bit? Well, the joys of it is to see um, the youth uh, progress through the program and then come back years later and say thank you. And um, you've had that happen. Oh, so many times. The mentor that you matched me with, Mr. Orlando, uh, was this to me, was that to me, and they still stay in contact because a lot of our mentors have been in the military, move on to other states or deploy or whatever, and um, they stay in contact with their mentee. Even though they're not here anymore, mm -hmm. it's a lifelong relationship now. And Whether uh, they're pen pals or they talk on the phone or they on the computer Facebook, or whatever. Facebook, emails, oh, yeah. whatever, yeah. But they have built that relationship. That's right. Mm -hmm. Wow, that mm -hmm. is fantastic. Yeah, I we, know that's got to be great to feel. Oh, it is. It is great. You know, they. Uh, I have had parents to call me right on and uh, saying those same things and telling other people in the community about the program, what it meant to them, and how it helped them with different challenges they may have had uh, with their children. Male or female. What ages can be a part of this program? Ages, children. Ages 5 to 16. 5 to 16. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, what are your goals for this program? Where do you hope it goes? Well, um, next month is National Mentor Month. Um, the National Mentor Society has uh, identified January as being the National Mentor Month. And um, so next month, we're really going to be pushing, campaigning for more mentors. Um, so my goal is to, by March, to try to have about 40 more mentors um, wow. to help, uh, help our youth here in Wayne County. And um, like I said, you know, it's all about that self-esteem and uh, letting the kids know that, hey, somebody's here for you, you need someone to talk to, somebody to coach you on. So a lot of us just need that little extra push mm -hmm. sometime. And, uh, that's what this mentoring program is all about. So we've helped a lot of kids, and we just hope to help a lot more. Well, you know, Alondo, as people are making their New Year's resolutions, mm -hmm. that, that's a thought. You know, if you're making a New Year's resolution, let one of your resolutions this year be to help and mentor a youth here in our community. <coughs> that would be a, a perfect fit. That would be something fantastic that you could do not only for, from, for someone else, but you know what? It helps us, too. Yes, it does. You know, it, it, it helps us as adults to really feel like we're giving back and we're doing something positive. That's right. You never know how much it can mean to someone else's life. Right. So we'll just expect that. Okay. We'll expect that for the year 2013 that we're going to have male, males in this community step up to the plate, call the YMCA and say, I want to be a mentor. Mm -hmm. I want to help a youth in our community. Here it is, the end of December. Mm -hmm. They've got a few weeks to think about it and right. reach out 
and you'll take mentors anytime during the anytime, year, will you not? Anytime during the year. So but, how do they get in touch with you? Well, uh, you can call to the YMCA at 919-778-8557. That's Orlando. And uh, they'll get you over to my phone, and uh, we'll go from there. What kind of commitment is someone making? Two hours a week or uh, three times a month uh, for 12 months. Um, it's not limited to the two hours a week. But they can do more. They, they can choose. do more if they like. Uh, going to a ball game. Uh, I mean, we've done things like we've been to a Carolina Duke football game before. So obviously that takes a little more time. Right. Ice skating. We got a chance to uh, take a visit out on Seymour Johnson to see all the airplanes. And uh, it, that was awesome. So I don't sometimes know you do so. things as a group. Right, we do things as a group. And like I said, now we um, every first Saturday we do group mentoring as well. Um, we got a group of young men from the Wayne Early Middle College that comes out every first Saturday now, and I bring a, and I call up a whole group of our mentees, especially the ones that don't have a mentor match yet. Uh, they come out every first Saturday. We do an enrichment part of the program, you know, building character, self-esteem, mm -hmm. things like that at the, at the beginning, and then we go out in the YMCA and uh, using uh, different facilities there, um, basketball, um, swimming. Uh, soccer, we, we just do a lot of different stuff just to have fun with the so kids. you're taking advantage of a lot of the yeah. opportunities right here in our community. Yeah, while, while you know, doing positive inserts while we are together. You right. Know. Well, what age does someone need to be to be eligible to be a mentor? Um, Is there a specific age? Typically, it's supposed to be 18. Uh, with the group mentoring, it can be 16. Okay. And so that's, that's the new thing that it, we just kind of added on. Mm -hmm. um, they kind of go outside of the box to make sure that we can meet the needs of more of our youth. So it sounds like you all are being very creative. You've got your creative hats on yeah. as you're trying to figure out ways to grow the program mm -hmm. here in our community. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Alondo. It sounds like you're doing a great job. You're mm -hmm. touching a lot of lives, mm -hmm. and I know that's got to be a rewarding feeling yes, for you all, you personally, but also the staff at the Y. Oh, yes, definitely. So. Well, um, I'd like to wish everyone a Merry, Merry Christmas and a happy new year. And uh, don't forget, sign up for mentoring, especially in January. That's right, January <laughs> is national, as he said, National, national mentoring, mentoring Month, so that yeah. would just be a perfect fit. If you're looking to do something special in your life and you would like to touch other lives, then call the YMCA and ask for Orlando Mitchell. He is the coordinator for the mentoring program here in our community. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much and happy holidays. And welcome back. That was great, though. Alondo does a fantastic job with the Y. He does do that. He does do that with the Y. You know, he's been working with the uh, uh, youngsters, and, and I'm a former drummer. Years ago, no, I didn't sell pots and pans out of a covered wagon. I mean, I was a drummer <laughs> drummer. You know, I played drums uh, years ago, and I'm always impressed with uh, anyone who has the ability to work with young people and teach them mm -hmm. the, the, the rudiments of, uh, of good drumming. And, uh, and he's done a wonderful job with the young people here in Wayne County. He certainly has, but and continues also, to do so. And continues to do so, but he also does great work with the young folks, the young population for the Goldsboro Family Y. That's right. That's right. Well, there is an event coming up. Um, to which is a workshop sponsored by the Wayne County Cooperative Extension Service, and it's intended for, uh, it's a program, a workshop for Wayne County landowners. It has to do with, uh, there's a series of meetings called Saving the Forest, and there's going to be a workshop coming up uh, January 15th, and this particular workshop will be about estate planning uh, regarding land, uh, the, uh, your land, if you're a landowner, a farmer, landowner here in, in uh, Wayne County, and sponsored by Wayne County Cooperative Extension Service, Mount Olive College, and NC Woodlands. They're hosting this forestry workshop. It's coming up on the 15th, and you can call the Cooperative Extension Service to get information about that at 731-1525. And guess what, Wayne? Elvis lives. No, oh. but the seniors have a new social club. Oh! Really? Yes, they do. There's a new social club. It's called the Senior Social Club. They're meeting today from 5.30 to 6.30 at the Peggy, Senior, Peggy Seegers Senior Center. And they're asking for people to come in and give your advice and your information and your suggestions about when the best dates and times are for the Senior Club to meet. Okay. So they're starting today. It's the very first meeting at 5.30 at the Seegers Senior Center. 
and I know and if you have that is a tongue That's twister a one, and if you have questions or if you would like to find out information before the meeting today you can call Aaron at 919-705-1785 that's Aaron at the Senior Center so that meeting starts at 530 this afternoon love to see you there all right that's great you know I have uh, yesterday we had a trivia question I have another trivia question okay what is uh, it I, I got a calendar trivia calendar for Christmas there <laughs> one of my gifts there and, uh, Perfect gift for Wayne. It was, yeah. Are you kidding? I love this. Um, the question is, and I'll ask now and answer later. Okay. Which finger mm -hmm. is fractured twice as often as any other finger? Um, I'm going to guess. I know you're not going to tell us the answer. I'm going to guess gonna and say it's either the thumb or the pinky. The thumb or the pinky? It's one of the two. I'm okay. just not sure which one. Maybe. Right, that's your that's guess. guess. That's my guess. All right. You only have. You know, most people only have 10 from which to choose, so, you know, it, okay. Which <laughs> so I got a pretty good chance of being right. That's right. Fractured <laughs> twice as often as any of the other fingers. Okay, that's the question for you. And you will find out the answer later. A little later on. That's well, right. Let's see. Building a better blood supply is the topic. The uh, Red Cross uh, offering uh, blood drives. That's coming up. Um, support the uh, blood drive for Hurricane Sandy victims. Uh, and be present to donate your platelets between January 1st and March 31st. That's the period of the uh, Building a Better Blood Supply program. This campaign will end on March 31st. Uh, those who do uh, offer blood and give blood in that uh, time frame will be automatically entered to win a gift card for a whole lot of money. And uh, that, uh, again, is uh, it ends and it runs now through the end of March. And... <laughs> and, uh, can't see the remainder of the details. Well, huh? I see that I can't. I don't know what that says. Anyway, there's a lot of places that's going to be uh, offering uh, blood mm -hmm. uh, uh, drives here. A lot of businesses and, and places offering. Is that amedesis? 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 Mm -hmm, I believe so. Amedesis? I'm amedesis sure. or something. Okay, if you're from Greece, it's <laughs> amedesis. If you're not from Greece, it's amedesis. Um, offering a blood drive that's between the Goldsboro Family Y and Chick-fil-A on Parkway Drive. They'll be offering a blood drive on January today. Is it today? today oh, what time? 10 o'clock until 2.30 this afternoon. 10 o'clock this morning until 2.30 this afternoon. We also have a blood drive coming yes, up we on do. the 17th of the month of January. It'll be a kind of a friendly competition between the city and the county. That's right. It's all you city and county staff. Don't forget, give blood on that day. That's right. Now, the city will be giving blood at the on Clingman Street yes. site, mm -hmm. and Wayne County will be giving blood somewhere else. I think <laughs> we'll let you the, know. At the, at the Red Cross office. <laughs> we'll let okay. you know. <laughs> yeah, we'll let you know. You have plenty of time to, to prepare. That's right. So save up your blood, okay? Don't, don't get any paper cuts or anything like that. Save your blood, <laughs> and then give all of it uh, on the 17th. Well, if you need something to do this Saturday night, we would love for you to come join us at the Paramount Theater. This weekend is the Fay Lane's Beauty Shop series. Yeah. These are stories of Fay Lane and her years growing up in her mother's beauty shop and the funny things that she has seen and learned over the years. And she is hilarious. Can you imagine? I can only imagine. She's a writer and performer. She lives in New York City, but she's still little Rhonda Fay Gunnels, who grew up in her mama's Texas beauty shop. On the front porch, a fat little girl in a glittered up Burger King crown practiced her beauty queen speeches and dreamed of being a star. She spent her time daydreaming on that porch with a moon pie in one hand and a hairbrush microphone in the other, just like many other little girls have done with that hairbrush microphone. Yeah. She gave concerts for the ladies and kept them captive while they were getting their hair dried and their hair done. <laughs> Don't miss Faye's stories and songs, mostly true and sometimes outrageous. This Saturday night at 7.30, Cost is $20 uh, for seniors and military and students is $15. You can get your tickets right there at the Paramount Theater at the box office or you can go to their website. That's this weekend, Fay Lane's Beauty Shop Stories. That sounds like a lot I of bet fun. that's going to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any beauty shop stories that you'd like to... Uh... No, I don't believe I want to share those. Uh, no. <laughs> I know when we went over to visit Percy Royal. Oh, we had you know, a good time with Royal's him. Royal's Classic Barbershop. That oh, was yeah. a lot of fun. It's not a... Not a a beauty shop, but it's no, a, it's a true barber shop, is, classic style, just a, like the name says. Yeah, just like the name says. It's very it's, professional. Oh gosh, yeah, he is. Uh, that's uh, that was a lot of fun. I, 
I really enjoy that. And it's a, a barber shop. And I can just imagine on given any given day of the week that there's there's folks in there that, that sit around and, and just talk about anything they want to talk about. That's right. You know? That's right. I can just imagine. That would be a nice place just to be a fly on the wall. If you will. <laughs> but I don't well, you can hear all about Faye's experiences this Saturday right. night. That's right. <laughs> but, you know, I don't think Percy would stand for that. No, I don't think he would either. Too professional in there. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. But anyway. Let's see what else we have. Who's up next? Up next, we're going to do two. We're actually going to hear the interview from Westland College where you talk with them about the things that that particular college has to offer our community. And then we're going to also hear from Sergeant Lerner with the Crime Stopper. So stay tuned. All right. Our guest today is Ms. Laura Estes. She is the director for Goldsboro Aspire, which is... What is that? That's North Carolina Wesleyan College, right? Yes, North Carolina Wesleyan College. Our Aspire program is our evening program geared towards working adults. Ah, working adults. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> yes. This is good. Now, Laura, first of all, thanks for being with us. I appreciate Thank your you being here. Uh, tell me about North Carolina Wesleyan College. Well, um, we have been in this area since 1975 at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. We've moved to downtown Goldsboro. Uh, in March of 2001 mm -hmm. and so we've been there ever since at the old Wachovia Bank building. Um, we offer there uh, the bachelor's degree in accounting, business administration, computer information systems, criminal justice, psychology, religious studies, and we've just added a new marketing degree. And everything that a student would need to get those degrees it's located in downtown Goldsboro, so they never have to travel to the main campus unless they just want to. So, so now this is four years mm -hmm. right here. They get a four-year degree at North Carolina Wesleyan right mm -hmm. here in downtown Goldsboro. That is correct. In all those areas. That's correct. Not all at the same time, but no. I mean, okay, <laughs> just they're, checking that. Unless they're really good. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we do have some, uh, most of our students are double majoring, so they've chosen two majors to work towards. We even have some that have three majors that they work towards. Um, wow. But we have, not only do we have students who've transferred in from community colleges, but we also have students who have never been to college before. They come in with their, um, either their high school diploma or GED mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. an accredited um, entity, and um, they're able to start and get all their general courses um, just as they would if they were going to a community college or tra another a traditional program. Right. Sorry. Or, or do you find that some people are actually surprised to, to find the college here? We, like, as I said, we've been here since 1975 right. and we've re we recruit all the time, but every time I've recruited anywhere, we have people come to the table and say, I didn't realize you were in downtown yeah, Goldsboro. Right. It's so, a college right here. And you're in the, the, the old Wachovia Bank building. We are. Which is a very tall building. It is. I believe it's the tallest building in town, yeah. except for the tower on the uh, the water tower Rainsboro thing? Rainsboro House. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was a trivia question one time. <laughs> that was a good trivia question, too. Well, let me ask you, the, uh, uh, how many floors of that building <clears throat> do you use? We, we have the lobby area, which we call mm -hmm. the student union. It's a right. lovely area with couches and tables where students can uh, mingle before mm -hmm. class, have their dinner, <clears throat> do study groups, right. meet with their teachers. Uh, also, the vault um, has been transformed into the faculty mailboxes. Um, we have classrooms on the second and third floor. Uh, we have two, com I'm sorry, three computer labs, um, and then the rest of them are just regular classrooms. Right. Um, our classroom sizes are anywhere from 10 to, we've had as high as 25. Uh, but the majority of them are right around 12 average size. Right, so the small classes mm -hmm. and... Uh, uh, and you have daytime classes as well as nighttime? Well, we're dabbling in that. You're um, dabbling in nighttime. We're night dabbling, time. doing a little mm. dabbling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, what, we were, what we have, we have some lunchtime classes, and the um, target group really was for people who are in the workforce mm. who have a little time during their lunch that wanted to work towards their bachelor's degrees. Mm -hmm. um, the classes are three times a week from 12 to 1 or 1 to 2, depending on which class you choose. We started out, they were um, like anything new that you try, it had a slow beginning. But yeah. now it's to the point where those classes are filling up pretty quickly. Well, I would have to think, Laura, that if you take an hour 
class a day. Mm -hmm. It may take you a while to get a bachelor's degree. Well, if you we make the schedule where you could actually take a couple if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Um, again, those lunchtime classes are really trying to gear, on, they're geared towards a certain group. The nighttime classes are one night a week, six to ten. Mm. So you could couple that lunchtime class with maybe one evening class. Okay. I've got another new format that I just tried this, um, that I'm going to be trying this uh, spring, where we have a morning Saturday class and an evening Saturday class. So you'd go from 8.30 to 12.30, mm -hmm. have a break, and then go from 1.30 to 5.30. And then you would be taking all your classes in one day. You would be a full-time student for financial aid purposes, ah. um, but you'd only have to be here one night, one day a week, and you'd be taking two classes. So, I'm hoping that um, that that'll catch on because yeah. I think that'll be real, a real flexible way for students. Any idea how many students? How many students do you have there? Uh, at the last count, it was around 260. Uh, we probably service about double that in a year because if you think about it, the people who are here in spring are not necessarily the same right. people that are here in the fall or the right. summer. Our classes, um, our sessions are eight weeks and five weeks and we have some online options. Oh. But the eight weeks are back to back. We don't do any breaks except the end of the year at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And you can step in, we call it step in, step out, where you can at any time um, step into the program, take a couple of terms, take a term off, come back. You're not gonna um, you're not gonna lose your place, I guess is uh, right. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, and it, that offers flexibility to people who work, and then maybe they need to go take a time off, take time off in the summer to go on vacation with their family, or uh, or if they have a surgery that needs to be scheduled, they can you know be out eight weeks and still come back into the program, and it's seamless. Out of the 260 some odd students you have, how many of those came from a two-year community college? I would, say, I would say probably half. Really? Um, we're finding, we have a lot of students who've been out of school for 20, 25, 30 years. Um, mm -hmm. They're, they're uh, coming back because they want to learn. Mm -hmm. It's not about getting a job. Um, it's about the time in their life where they feel like they want to do something for them. Right. Um, and. Uh, you know, because of that, there's some technology issues that, that those students run across sometimes. Um, we try our staff, we have an awesome staff. We've got um, three other, I have three other staff members and we have, we've got uh, Heather that works in financial aid, Keisha that does registration, and Corey who's our main advisor. And um, we all are, uh, feel very strongly about good customer service. We want everyone that comes in to feel welcome and feel like they can come to us if they have any issues mm -hmm. or problems. So yeah. if they're having problem with their computers and we're down there trying to help them figure out what their issues are <laughs> as much as we can. Right. Okay, again, one, uh, go over the list of degrees available again one more time. Okay. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Accounting, business administration, computer information systems, psychology, criminal justice, religious studies, and our newest major is marketing. Marketing. Yes. Oh boy. Yes. Sell, sell, sell. Yes. All and right. That, that's got a lot of interesting uh, topics in it, it as well. So, how does someone contact? You? To whom do they speak at, at, the, at the college? You or anyone? All they need to do is come visit us at 139 West Walnut Street. That's the corner of James and Walnut, tallest building in town. Can't miss <laughs> it, right? And don't need an appointment. Um, you can just come in and sign in. Whoever's available, we'll talk to. Um, the prospective student and a answer questions and we're the kind of place too that if you come in and it's not the program for you then we've got other you know extra other ideas you know other we don't just send somebody saying thank mm. you very much yeah. we do try to help the person. Wow that, that, Laura that's great so is there a phone number? Yes 919-736-2312 um, 919-736-2312 they can also email us at goldsboro at ncwc.edu. Goldsboro at ncwc at edu. I got it. Okay. I got it. I, don't, I didn't even have to, but I'm going to have to write it down. Okay. Our guest today has been Laura Estes of North Carolina Wesleyan College. I hope you're able to come back soon. Lots of great information for you here if you aspire to greatness. To greatness. <laughs> there you go. 
Aspire. That's our word of the day. No, wait a minute. That's something else entirely. I appreciate you being Thank here. You, Thank Wayne. you so much. North Carolina it. Wesleyan College. Thank you. Today I have with me Sergeant Paige Lerner with the Crime Stoppers. Welcome, Paige, to the Welcome. show. Hey, good morning. So you have two different cases you'd like to highlight today and ask for the community's help. Can you give us some details? I do. One is actually a little bit of an older case. The actual incident happened in August of 2010, but we are actually still looking for this person. Mm -hmm. um, we had a gentleman by the name of Mr. Ward who reported a break-in at his residence, and it, that was at 100 Keith Place. And in that break-in, they only stole two firearms. But through an investigation, one of the suspects that, was, uh, that did come out of that investigation was a female by the name of Rayana Jackson Richards. Um, she is a black female, approximately 22 years old, five foot six and 175 pounds. She is wanted for failure to appear on these charges and that is for the larceny of the firearms and possession of stolen goods. And we need the public's help as far as bringing her forward. I um, brought a picture so hopefully the public out there gets to take a look at her and somebody will recognize her. But I did want to kind of take this opportunity to remind everybody, you know, what Crime Stoppers is about. Mm -hmm. um, when they call the Crime Stoppers number, which is that 735-225 number, the person that answers the phone is me. And um, all of that information it remains anonymous, you know. Because it, you can't see who's calling you. The absolutely. number is blocked, correct? Yeah, the number is blocked. I can't see the name and I can't see the number of the caller. You know, the callers remain anonymous as always, and if it's information that leads to a felony arrest, Crime Stoppers pays up to $1,000 cash rewards. Um, and, you know, the second biggest thing that the, the public is seeming to use more often is texting me. Mm -hmm. And so if they text the number 222-4230, it goes to the same phone, and I'm the only one that receives those text messages. I can see the text messages, but, again, I can't see who's texting me, and I can't see the phone number it comes from. So a lot of times that, that's been real helpful. Well, Sergeant Lerner, you know, when they're texting you or whether they're calling you, either way, if it does lead to a felony arrest, you said they are eligible for a cash prize. They are eligible for a cash reward, and that could be up to $1,000. You know, the, the reward amounts are uh, different. They could be anywhere from $50 on up to 1000 It just depends on the severity or what the crime is and what's involved with it. Well, with them being an anonymous phone call or an anonymous text, how do you go about meeting these people to give them the reward? Usually what happens is what we do is we set up a code name. It has nothing to do with their real name, you know, so that it's not recognizable to myself or anybody mm -hmm. else. What I have them do is call me back and check in with me periodically to see if we made an arrest. And once they call me back and I have made an arrest, then they choose the uh, location that they're comfortable with, and we meet and pay out the cash reward that way. Very good. Very okay. simple. And what is your second case that you're working on? Well, the second one's very recent. That was uh, actually occurred uh, December 31st of this year at about 2.30 in the morning. We had a break-in at the Berkeley Mall. And we had a suspect go in and cut gates open at, at two businesses inside the mall. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the main things that they were able to steal was a, a large amount of jewelry from one of the stores in the mall. We um, definitely want the public's help. If anybody's got information with somebody with a large amount of bracelets, gold and silver, um, any information that they think might lead to this break-in and the damage to these businesses, we definitely want the public's help. And tell us again what numbers they call. They call 735-2255, or if you want to text me, you can text me at 222-4230. Very good. Well, Crime Stoppers needs your help. You see the number behind us and Sergeant Lerner has given you the number you can also text. We appreciate your, your help on this case and any case that you've seen in the past. You can call 911 as well and the Absolutely. information will directly get to Sergeant Lerner. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us today, Paige. We appreciate it and we ask for your help in the community. Thank you so much and we'll see you again on WGTV Today. We're back on WGTV Today, Wayne Goldsboro Television Today, and Kim, today is National Eat Something Raw Day. Well, I like to eat raw carrots and cucumbers and lots of veggies. Do you really? Love it. I do, too. I love, love to eat uh, raw veggies. Me, too. Uh, yeah, just about anything. It's just, it's really good. Today is also Argyle Day. It's a time to wear something bright, not only socks, but something bright, Argyle-ish. Is that a word? Yeah, you just made it one. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, Argyleish. Uh, today is Women's Day in Greece. Today is the day that uh, in Greece men do all the housework, take care of the children. Today, while the women goof off, 
Hmm, I like that. Okay. <laughs> In some villages, men caught outdoors today actually... <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> they're drenched in cold water. My goodness. After their clothes are removed. Anyway, moving on now. Today is also Elvis's birthday, born this day, 1935. Uh, it's milk carton day. This is the day when Sheffield Farms in 1929 became the first company to package milk in a paraffin-lined paper uh, instead of glass bottles. Prior to that, it was glass bottles. Today is also National Bubble Bath Day. Okay. I didn't realize you could actually give bubbles baths. If I had a bubble, we'd give it a bath right here, but it's bubble bath today. Today is also the birth anniversary of David Bowie, 65 today. Christy He's 65. He is 65 years today. My goodness. Christy Lane is 72. Journalist Charles Osgood is 79. Amy Dolan's the actress, 43. A birthday today for Gabby Hoffman. She is 30 today. And TV host Bob Eubanks uh -huh. of the Newlywed Gang. Yes. And many others. He is 75 today. How about that? All right. <laughs> President Johnson declared a war on poverty this day in 1964. And we're still fighting that, that war. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Let's see. There's an open mic. On Tuesday, I know, Tuesday, January the 22nd at 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And that is at Wayne Services on Aging. I get real nervous about open mic. <laughs> it says today, the, or on the 22nd, the Senior Center will be hosting an open mic program. The microphone will be on and seniors will be able to share their talents with the audience. Hey. Some seniors sing, some read poetry, and others just address the group. There's a three-minute time limit. Come join the fun. So that is January 22nd. That's a Tuesday, 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. I bet that would be fun. That sounds like a lot of fun. And they can contact Aaron at 919-705-7185 if you would like to have find out any more information. Open mic. Well, I'll tell you, during the, uh, the Wayne Regional Agricultural Fair mm -hmm. on Senior Day, they have a uh, they have a talent yeah, contest. exactly. And it's amazing what some of these seniors can do. That's right. That's so right. So that's going to be a great program there. Yeah, it sure what day is. Was that? that is the 22nd, Tuesday the 22nd. Of January. Of January. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That's good. That's exactly right. Well, on the 15th at the Senior Center, the Peggy M. Senior Senior Center, <laughs> it's a mouthful. There's, it is. There's going to be a, uh, an arthritis exercise class, the beginning of it anyway. It's on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, beginning on the 15th, starting at 10 a.m. and going for only an hour. It's an eight-week program every Tuesday and Wednesday offering gentle, joint-safe exercises developed specifically for people with arthritis. Registration is required. Call Aaron at 705-1785. 705-1785 for this free arthritis exercise class. And the Red Cross has another blood drive at Rosewood High School. That is Saturday, February the 2nd from 9 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon. All donors will get an Adams Car Wash coupon. Whoa. How about that? For additional information, you can call 919-735-7201. That is Saturday, February the 2nd, right. 9 to 2. Well, I asked a trivia question a little while ago. Yes, Which you did. finger is fractured twice as often as any other? Yes. And you said you thought I said it might thumb be the pinky. or pinky. Well, am I let's wrong? See. The answer is the pinky. Woo! It's fractured twice as often as any other. And you know, the reason I thought that it may be that is I've seen so many people, honestly, that their their pinky is sort of what would you call it? It's, crooked? Yeah, I'd say it's a little um, deformed or crooked. Yeah, and it's from shape. very, I've heard basketball injuries. Yeah. I've heard all kinds of injuries through the year. And it always seems to be the pinky. I did it. Did you really? I did. I broke my pinky uh, about 40 years ago. My mom did too when she was playing basketball. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. And never never had a splint or anything. So now it's, you know, kind of crooked. Yeah, well, yeah. Is yours crooked? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was that one. Yeah, it's a little crooked on the end there. Interesting fact. Indeed, the Wayne Opportunity Center, that's uh -huh. uh, John Chance and all the fine folks over there, oh, yes. are now able to offer shredding of documents. They offer shredding. That's right. Now, uh, and they do this at your business uh, due to the purchase of a shredding truck made possible by the city of Goldsboro. Uh, the pricing is competitive with other vendors, so call John Chance or anyone there at uh, the Wayne Opportunity Center and ask about their shredding uh, offer. 
That's okay. exactly right. <laughs> All right. 735-5363. 735-5363. Okay. Well, Wayne, we, we are all looking to stay healthy this cold and flu season because we have heard that the flu is going around and it is unbelievable. Washing those hands, hands I know. Right. Well, here's three additional ways to stay healthy through the winter months. Oh, good. Okay. As the temperature uh, cools down, many people will catch their first cold of the season. And with the dreaded cold comes the loss of productivity and even fun. And nobody enjoys getting sick, but few people actually understand the simple ways you can safeguard your health. And I'm not talking about a flu shot. I'm talking other simple ways that you can stay well. One, consider your diet and make adjustments. That's a biggie. Well, okay, wait a minute. What do you, uh -huh. what do you mean? What do I mean? Yeah. Poor nutrition is the very first invitation for a cold. Did oh, you know that? I didn't know that. During the holidays and the cooler weather, we gradually eat more and more junk food. Well, that's probably true. Mm -hmm. Plus, fall and winter are jam-packed with celebrations that all revolve around food. Many yeah. of the foods are not really great for you. Oh, really? Imagine that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So concentrate on eating your fruits and your vegetables and ward off the cold and the flu. The more raw, like we talked about earlier, mm. and unprocessed, the better they are for you. Remember cooking, packaging, and processing strips. Remember cooking, packaging, and processing strips. Key nutrients from products that, oh, I get it now, that your body needs. Yeah, it took a second. <laughs> yeah, that right. sentence just didn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So but, it says but, but consider right. a smoothie or something like that. Oh, okay. Consider a smoothie or a shake to get all those veggies and fruits in that you need all in one swoop. Oh, okay. I like that. <laughs> I like that too. So that, that's one thing, and we'll talk about some others later. Well, that sounds good. All yep. right. And I think up next we have Goldsboro Parks and Recreation. Mark is here today to talk to us about the next hillbilly hike oh and our, I believe our farmer's market. Yeah. Yeah, so stay tuned. <music> Joining me today is Mark Wilson with Goldsboro Parks and Recreations. Good morning. Good morning. Well, you all have a schedule full of events at yes. Goldsboro Parks and Recreation we coming sure up do. soon. sure yes. Well, tell me what's on the calendar first. Uh, we're going to be talking about our farmer's market coming up uh, on Monday, January 14th at 9 a.m. Herman Park Center. Uh, we're inviting all the, the future vendors, farmers, uh, to come out and discuss uh, the farmer's market that's coming up. Oh, sure. that's, that's great. So people from the community, if they're interested in being a vendor at the farmer's market, can attend this meeting. Correct. And can give their opinions and ideas on what they think would be successful. That's correct. We're going to talk about dates, rules, location, and all that. So. We're going to really uh, use their input in, in deciding all this. Well, you know, it has seemed to grow year after year, and the farmer's market is getting better and better every year, and you all are doing a great job in, in finding out what the community wants and listening to those needs. Yeah, thank so you. So tell us one more time when that is. Uh, it's Monday, January 14th at 9 a.m., Herman Park Center. Perfect. Well, now the next big thing, don't you have a hillbilly hike coming up? We sure do. A hillbilly hike is Saturday, May 4th. Uh, of course, this year it's going to be at Stony Creek Park this time. So tell us about last year's hillbilly hike, what it is, what the purpose is, and then we can move forward to the new hillbilly hike. Uh, last year was, was at Waynesboro Park. We were actually raising some money for the park itself. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's a 5K obstacle horse race. It's all hillbilly themed, so the obstacles are, have some kind of hillbilly nature to it, like the hay mountain climb, uh, feedback hall. Um, it was a really good time. We had over 100 participants last year. Um, we had that is quite wonderful. a few volunteers and spectators as well. Well, we heard great reviews. Everybody that attended really went on and on about how much fun they have, how interesting it was, and how great right here in our own community it was to have an obstacle course 5K. Because yeah. they're, they're really becoming popular all over they the really community. Are. They really are. They really are. And uh, every, like you said, everybody had a blast. All the participants did. Our volunteers did. And even our staff just, just really enjoyed it. They were really looking forward to the next one. So this one is going to be same type event, mm -hmm. but it's going to be at a different location. That's right. We'll do it at Stony Creek Park this year. Stony Creek Park. And yes. what's that date? It is Saturday, May 4th. Tell me some of the things that are unusual that are going to happen at this <clears throat> hillbilly hike versus last year's. Well, we're going to use a, a few of the same obstacles, um, but we have around five that are going to be new. We're trying to trade some out. Um, this time we're going to have a zip line. Uh, we're going to have uh, a grit pit, a huge dumpster full of grits that that uh, people can jump in and wade through and climb out. We're going to have dumpster diving. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, with full of boxes going in and out. So it's, it's, we're really looking forward to this <laughs> so one. So you are getting very creative, it yeah, sounds like. Yeah, we're really working on that. <laughs> 
So all of this will take place right there at Waynesboro, no, right there at Stony Creek, Stony Park. Creek Park. And it'll last how long, would you say? Um, well, the race itself will take between 45 minutes to an hour, but uh, last year we had, we had one participant that did really good. He, he finished in, I think, 33 minutes. Wow. Yeah, it was, he smoked it. He went pretty fast. Um, uh, but for the event itself, we usually start up at about 8 o'clock. We have different waves you can sign up for, and it's all okay. online at hillbillyhike.com. Uh, registration's up. You can sign up for whichever time you want to compete in. Oh, great. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so um, all in all, we start off at 8 o'clock, and the last wave usually starts about 1030. But depending on if we get more folks to sign up, it could lead on to the latter part of the day. So after the event is over, the actual obstacle course, mm -hmm. then don't you have an award ceremony? We do. We have an award ceremony. Last year, um, um, Bevel's uh, Pull It Yourself parts, um, Wayne Aldo Salvage was very very helpful to us and they, uh, they lent us some, some hubcats and we gave those out for awards. <laughs> they were quite interesting yeah. awards at the different colors. You know, you had gold hubcaps, you had silver hubcaps. You gold, had... silver and bronze and, and they loved it too. <laughs> they were holding it up in the of air, course. flashing it off. It was, of course, it was awesome. and there's some great pictures on your, on your website as well mm -hmm. and on uh, your Facebook page that shows little things that happened last year to make it quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a really good time. We're looking forward to this year's event. So the funds that will be raised at this year's Hillbilly Hike will benefit who? Homes for Our Troops. Um, it's a nationwide organization that actually helped raise money uh, to, to give to to veterans of, of our military that uh, um, aren't able to get around as well and we can help build them homes that, that suits their needs. Wonderful. Well, how do you go about choosing the, the platform or the, the charity organization that this would benefit? Well, we really, this, this time we really wanted to do something for our military, being that we're in Goldsboro with uh, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. We really wanted to do something for the, for the military. Wonderful. Well, tell me about sign-ups one more time. You said you can sign up on like it, online at hillbillyhike.com. Sure hillbillyhike.com. Registration is open. Um, right now it's at $50 mm -hmm. um, per person. Um, it'll, it'll periodically go up as we get closer to, to the race itself. Um, so it's so always it's much good. more beneficial to go right. ahead now. The, the quicker you register, um, you're sure to get your spot. You can get your own the time you want and you can do it cheaper. So, so what does your registration include? Uh, it includes a racing shirt. Um, last year we're going to do the same thing, a uh, mm -hmm. moisture wicking shirt. It was really cool. Um, the race itself, and uh, we're looking at doing an after party there at the park. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. All right, tell us that <clears throat> date one more time. Saturday, May 4th, and we're also we're looking for sponsors. So any businesses out there that are really looking forward to promoting your business, uh, we have a lot of packages available, and you can just contact me, uh, Mark Wilson, number 739-7484, uh, email address mwilson at goldsboronc.gov. Um, and I'd be, be willing to really work with you on, on a good package that suits your needs. Is some of this information on your website as well? Uh, yes, hillbillyhike.com. Okay, hillbillyhike.com. And also you can visit um, your Facebook page, whether it's Goldsboro Parks and Recreation or whether it's um, the Hillbilly Hike one, but right. they all intermingle and they mm -hmm. all have the same information. So wherever you go, it'll all take you back to the Hillbilly Hike information. That's right. Well, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, we are too. There's, there's a lot of, of photos and videos out there, on, on, of course, on Facebook, on YouTube. So if you're kind of hesitant, you don't really know what it's about, you can also go to our website and those social media pages and really get a good feel for it. That's right. It's the, probably the easiest way to go would go straight to the city's website, click right on our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and it'll take you to a, a site that tells you all about Hillbilly Hike, and you can see the videos from last year, people talking about mm -hmm. how they completed it, what they enjoyed about it, and how they're looking forward to the next one. Mm -hmm. So it'll give you some details. Well, thank you, Mark. We're looking forward to this year's Hillbilly Hike. We are too. And I will invite you to come back again a little bit closer to time and give us an update and share some more information about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you so much, and thank you for listening and paying attention to what's happening in your community. And here we go. We're we are back. back. That's right. Well, Mark gave us some great information on the Hillbilly Hike, and we'll be there to cover that event, but it will be so much fun in May. You know, I see this thing growing Absolutely. every year because it was so popular, to, the very first one. To popular. have over 100 participants. I know. And it was, you know, it wasn't advertised a tremendous amount. So we're expecting big things and great things to continue happening at Goldsboro Parks and Rec. And I do. I see it growing quite a bit. And I Absolutely. hope it does. Me too. It's a lot of fun. Can you imagine trying to wade through a vat of grits 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 yeah it's going to be fun it's going to be interesting 
We're not making any promises. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> People train for these 5Ks and these obstacle courses for months and months to get prepared to do that. That's right. I don't even Amtrak. You know what I'm saying? I don't train for anything. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Okay, let's see. Uh, Georgia sent a uh, notice over about a uh, something rather serious here. If you or a family member um, are in need of information about uh, a stroke or you have suffered a stroke or you want to know more about it, there's going to be a meeting. The Stroke Support Group is a group here in Wayne County. It's been here in, for quite a while, and they will. They did not have a meeting in December. Right. Their next meeting will be the end of February. The next meeting will be February 28th at the hospital, and if you want information about that, you can call the hospital rehab department at 731-6005. 6005-731-6005 and, uh, and they'll be happy to talk with you about the next stroke support group meeting February 28th at the hospital. Wonderful. You know, Wayne, earlier we had talked about ways to keep yourself well and healthy during the winter months. Yes. And we were talking about there's three different areas to keep you well. We talked about one, about your diet and how to make adjustments for your diet. Eat raw foods and raw vegetables and of course washing your hands and that type thing. But yeah. it was all about your diet. A couple of the other um, ways they were saying to stay healthy is to stay active. That consistency is the key. Winter is seen as the season of hibernation, but that doesn't mean you have to succumb to the winter blues. Not that there's anything wrong with hibernating. That's right, right. and packing on that holiday weight. That's right. <laughs> it may be too cold for running or out outdoor activities, but it doesn't mean you can't find ways to keep active. Consider some simple yoga poses. You can do those in high at home. Have you Yo not done yoga before? Yoga poses? Yeah. Yoga poses. That's right. You do it over a 20-minute period or so. That sounds uh, like something you eat or grow. No, yoga, yoga is like a stretching. Oh, you it's mean like yoga. It's just stretching. Yeah, it's like yoga. It can be done easily indoors, and your body will benefit immensely. Yoga. Wasn't he one of the little characters in that movie? Uh, that was Yogi. Yogi? Yogi Bear. Oh. Hey, hey, boo-boo. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> it says this can be done easily indoors. It, you can benefit immensely. Simply hold the positions. It tones and energizes your muscles. And you normally, you, you don't normally use every day. A lot of the muscles, it, this, it stretches ones that, you know, maybe haven't been stretched in a long yeah, time. Yeah. Plus, the more focused breathing in yoga is great for the holiday stress relief. The third thing is take your vitamins. And how many of us don't do that like we should? Okay. Now that colder temperatures are keeping us indoors, we can all benefit from taking our vitamin D, mm -hmm. which you get from the sun, of course, which is normally something you get from being outside. And even if you're indoors and outdoors only a little, you, can, you cannot always get enough vitamin D, so take that vitamin D. Yeah. Let's see. It's, the, it's critical for immune system strength as well as preventing the cold and flu, mm -hmm. and most of us are lacking it. Vitamin D. Vitamin yeah. D. That's right. That's right. That there's the three major things it says to do. Consider your diet, keep active, and take your vitamins. And, you and might I would throw in wash your hands. Yeah, and throw in wash your hands and also a multivitamin. Is Absolutely, yeah. And it mentions uh, taking a, a good multivitamin is something everyone should do regardless of how well you eat. Yeah, yeah uh, that's true. It's especially true in the winter if you want to prevent a weak immune system because it's harder to eat a well-balanced diet. With in the, sometimes we have inefficient nutrients in our bodies through the winter months. No. Imagine that. Inefficient nutrients. <laughs> exactly. Well, think about all the holidays that oh. go through the winter season and how we eat. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Cakes and pies uh, and goodies. Ooh. And, and all those homemade things people oh, make. Oh, man. Yeah, the, 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 the chocolate-covered pretzels. Yes. Oh. I know. I know. Yeah. And anything with sugar on it. Yeah, and you know we've we've heard several times from people from the hospital, and they're talking about how our community in Eastern North Carolina is ranked very high for diabetes. Yeah, and and that is that is a very serious topic. Absolutely. And a lot of people, you would think they would be aware, but it's like so many other things. It just it, it happens it's just so there, slowly. Right. It mm -hmm. happens so slowly that people don't think about it and it's always going to happen to someone else it's not going to happen to me that's right well guess what it can yeah she and they were telling us that from the hospital uh, recently whenever uh, becky was on she was saying there's a simple little test that can be done when you go to your doctor for your regular checkup and she called the name of it we'll learn about it later on one of the upcoming shows that you can have that little test to find out how you stand regarding diabetes <laughs> yep 
Uh, I had my checkup. Here. Did you? Not a diabetes checkup. I had a, the, my uh, your regular yearly uh, checkup. Regular yearly checkup. I'm, I'm, my doctor was happy. Well, good. Yeah. That's good. If your doctor's happy, usually you're going to be happy. I'm happy to be breathing. <laughs> but the uh, doctor was happy. Okay. Well, let's see who's coming up on tomorrow's up show. On tomorrow's program. That's right. Tomorrow, I believe, we're going to hear from Tyler Barwick Graham, who is the president of the Mount Olive Chamber of Commerce. Tyler Barwick Graham. Graham. Recently married. We'll also see the pickle drop from Mount Olive Pickle. Really? Yeah, we're going to have a video of that taking place on New Year's Eve. Great. And then we actually have Steve, who's the IT director here with the county, and Steve he comes Cross. on and talks yeah. about a lot of the technology upgrades and things that are happening here in the county. All right. So stay tuned for some more of the show. All right. So uh, I'll tell you what, we're, we're here every morning at 7 o'clock here on Channel 10 and then the uh, northern part of the county on Channel 99. So join us every day, Monday through Friday, here for WGTV Today at 7 a.m. or in any of the repeat programming you mm -hmm. might see throughout the day at noon at 5.30 and then again in the evening, Monday through Friday, and then over the weekend to be able to see the best of programs. That's so right. We're here to provide lots of information for you to know what is happening right here locally in your community. And on our YouTubes as well, go to WayneGov.com and click on the YouTube link. It takes you right to our channel. Or GoldsboroNC.gov and click right on our YouTube channel to sure. find out what's happening right here locally. So, if you happen to miss the program, you have plenty of ways of finding out. Otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. And until then, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best, and this is what's happening in your community.